Hey, thanks a lot. Um, thanks for coming out in the morning. I know it's hard, uh, especially if you've been in Black Hat for a while, so you've been uh, drinking for a few days like I have. So um, I'm going to talk about my perspectives on cybersecurity and cyber warfare. And you may wonder who I am and why it matters, and I sometimes wonder that as well. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about me. Uh, I am formerly the CSO of Facebook. I actually quit about three weeks ago, um, but spent five years building up the security organization in Facebook from nothing to uh, what it is today, which is a really great organization. I think some of my old team are in the audience. Um, and one of the things I'm going to talk about is how that worked. Prior to that, I was a Fed. Uh, never been spotted as a Fed at DEF CON. Um, I'm not one now, so you can't spot me. Uh, <laughs> and I did a computer forensics examination and ran the, uh, the Unix program, did all the tools for uh, Unix examinations, things of that nature. For that, I was a VP of technology at Ticketmaster. Uh, Hmm, there you go. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was a great, great time. I was glad to leave. Uh, and prior to that, I worked in financial services in Europe and uh, uh, spat around a lot of packets that were worth a lot of money to people, so uh, they really cared about them. I learned a lot at that job. But most importantly, um, I love the game Deus Ex, and uh, even though it's old, and like I am, it's a great game, so go play it. A little bit more. Um, you might wonder how many volumes I'm releasing during this talk, and the answer is zero. Uh, is anyone's name Big Zero, by the way? No? You can take that. Um, I'm kind of pissed that I'm making the, the badge talk, because uh, the badge is really cool uh, this year, and uh, some of the stuff that it does with other badges is also pretty cool. That's a hint. Uh, so leave now if you want to learn about that, because I'm not going to talk about that. Here's what I am going to talk about. <coughs> I'm going to start off with the topic that I know the least about, which is cyber warfare. And I say that I know the least about it because uh, I think people who talk about it actually don't know that much about it. And, um, and I've been studying it for a little while, and I'm very interested in how it overlaps with cybersecurity, which is why I made this talk. Um, I'm going to talk then about cybersecurity, and when I talk about cybersecurity there, what I'm really talking about is the way that I viewed uh, uh, security and how we built out the organization at Facebook to, to support that. Um, it's, a, it's a little different, I think, from, from what other people think. I have a slightly different emphasis. I hope you guys get something out of that. And then I'm going to talk about how I think cyber warfare and cyber security are the same thing and uh, how going forward there may be ways to make them overlap. So uh, there we go. And then I'm going to ask you guys to do some stuff for me. You don't have to. When I do a presentation, I always like to make up some little rules, um, except I don't want to call them rules because axiom is a much better word. It has an X in the middle of it. Uh, and this is one that I think is pretty important, so I made it number one, which is um, the word cyber is pretty dumb, but we use it a lot because we don't really have any other word that's not as dumb to describe it. I'm going to be saying it a lot during this presentation. You're going to be tired of hearing it, but not as tired as I'm going to be of saying it, but I'm still going to say it. <coughs> so. Here's what I've been thinking about with cyber warfare. If you read a lot of things in the press, and especially a recent uh, semi-popular book, you would believe that come the cyber war, everything's going to break down. Anything with an IP address is going to burst into flame, <coughs> probably in your pocket. Uh, it's my understanding that the IP6 devices are going to be spewing locusts. Um, so I don't know how we can defend against that. There's no power. I mean, all this stuff will go away. That also means no cold beer. Oh! I know. There we go. Now we're fighting. <laughs> and, uh, you know, of course, dogs and cats will be living together. Uh, it's just going to be horrible. Here's what I think is actually going to happen. None of those things. Maybe the, well, maybe the cat and dog thing. Um, and I'll tell you why. <coughs> If a cyber war, hot cyber war, actually breaks out, the network's more valuable to everyone on the field up than it is down. So if anything goes down, it's probably going to be localized and it's going to have a specific objective and it's not going to affect a lot of people. I could be wrong. I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully not. Um, it, it, and actually, this is a good time where talking about tactical objectives, just to make sure that we're all kind of on the same page with some of the terminology. So strategy in war is an overview of, the, of what things you want to achieve. Stuff like 
let's defend computers or let's keep the network up or let's, you know, keep IP6 devices from spewing locusts. And then tactics are specific actions that you take that are in furtherance of those, uh, of those strategies. <coughs> And then there's the concept of doctrine, which is in the middle between those two things. You have strategic goals, you have actions that you can take in between them, but how do you connect those two things? What when are you do, uh, making tactical decisions, taking tactical actions? How do they support your strategic actions? And doctrines are really what says that and what defines that. So I've talked to a lot of people um, inside and outside of government about what our current U.S. cyber war doctrine is. And I've discovered there isn't one. <laughs> um, there's actually a lot of them. And it really depends on who you talk to as to what level it is. Every service I talk to decides to look at a cyber war through stuff that they own, specifically stuff that they have responsibility and budgets for, and recast cyber war in that thing. So for instance, you talk to someone from the Air Force, they will talk about it in terms of close air support, strategic bombardment, uh, stuff like that, precision munitions. You talk to someone from the Army, they talk about it in terms of logistics and laying wire and moving packets and, and things like that. You talk about someone, talk about it to someone uh, in FBI or, or DHS and they look at it as a law enforcement problem and recast it that way. All of these things are actually true and false. Mostly false because I think that they're missing the point that there's actually some other more unifying doctrine out there that has yet to be developed. But they're true in that from the perspective of every agency, from the perspective of every uh, organization, they are matching, cyber is a part of those missions, all of those missions. Um, so when you get people together to talk about it, they'll tell you a cyber war doctrine. They'll say it's the US cyber war doctrine. It's really their cyber war doctrine. But these doctrines do share some themes. Uh, by and large, all of them say we're going to do things defensive, or sorry, we're going to do things to gather intelligence. We think that our opponents are doing things to gather intelligence, and we're going to, going to look at that. Intelligence is, uh, you know, I can see you and I know what you do. By the way, this is a Devo shout out. I don't know if, hope you guys get it. Um, <clears throat> and then there's also network defense, which uh, is trying to keep, generally these days, keep people from doing the intelligence gathering against you. And then occasionally one or two people will poke up their heads and then stop talking about this part of it, which is, uh, this is military speak right here, deny personnel or assets to your adversary. Um, what that really means is killing someone or blowing something up. Um, or also, you know, making the router stop working. These themes are all things that are in all the doctrines that I've heard about uh, to varying degrees. The intelligence gathering is definitely the strongest across the board. <clears throat> which is actually this is what I just said. <laughs> um, but like I said, there isn't a, less, a lot of uh, strong emphasis on interdiction, on denying assets and, uh, and keeping personnel out right now. And that's in the U.S. I think that that's probably not necessarily true in other countries. I think other countries are definitely more focused on that uh, and, uh, and are working on it. And then here's a caveat. I'm a civilian. I'm just a guy and I ask people questions and they tell me things and I kind of put all this together. It could be that uh, I'm completely off because the people who really know about this aren't talking. And, um, and they probably won't be talking for a while because they're still figuring it out as well. So um, the military has done some other things besides coming up with the cyber war doctrine. And um, you know, I'd posit that the cyber security field as a whole originally started in the military because the military made some uh, security standards like TCSEC, the old orange book, if you know that, and then codified that through purchasing so that if you were going to buy something and they felt it had a security aspect, you had to be orange book certified to be certain places in their organization. So they forced that out into the private sector. And that was, uh, I, to my belief, probably one of the original uh, founding documents of cybersecurity as an as a, uh, industry. Of course, TCSEC was updated and became the common criteria a few years ago, but uh, you know, it's still kind of the same model of thinking about security 
in that it's compliance, there's a checklist, you get certified, and that's supposed to make you more safe. <coughs> um, and all those doctrines are, are infosec based doctrines, not really information operations doctrines. That's a whole, whole separate thing, um, which I had actually more in, but I had to take out in there. So, some problems with that is at the very core of the military's thinking about computing assets, and subsequently at the core of what I think cybersecurity people think about computer assets, is we're protecting them still like they're buildings. Um, you know, in, in, in the late 60s and through the 70s, computers were pretty much synonymous with buildings. I mean, there was going to be a big building that your computer was in, or there was going to be a core at the center of your battleship that your VAXs were sitting in. These were big boxes and had to be controlled like that. So it was easy and natural to think about them as being buildings. So you make walls, like firewalls, you have access controls, you determine who and where you can get into certain compartments and, and keep track of that and audit those so that you know, hey, these people got to these files, they, they may have done something with them. But that na by necessity, that philosophy makes you physically segregate your compartments or even virtually segregate your compartments, which reduces the information flow between the compartments. And, and something that I think people forget sometimes is that the whole purpose of these machines, the whole purpose we have computers, is to process information, to move information, to make information flow. So to the extent that the uh, uh, older information security protocols keep that from happening, they're actually reducing the functionality of the machines. <coughs> so moving forward, th these are things that uh, uh, just part of my thinking I'm going to be doing, but like I think everyone can think about it and contribute to it because uh, there is still a unified doctrine out there. I think that the uh, agencies and the government should think more about what a unified cyber warfare doctrine would be. Um, Cybercom's kind of starting, but Cybercom is uh, kind of at its inception is thinking a lot about intelligence because of the people running it. So they're going to end up with an intelligence based cyber warfare doctrine, probably. Um, so I think a good doctrine would be devoid of the service based bias. It should be applicable across all the services. And, uh, should be able to encompass things like gathering intelligence, uh, doing the Quillos air support equivalent in the information warfare field, but also being able to go and uh, blow something up if you need to. So those are my thoughts on cyber warfare. Um, I'm still thinking about them as, as everyone is, uh, but they'll, they'll come together at the end of this the presentation. So for cybersecurity, <coughs> Uh, going back to the origins in the military, here's where a lot of us, I think, came from, going, coming into uh, security roles. How, I mean, like how many people in here started off as a sysadmin or an admin? Probably a lot. A lot. <laughs> um, and the way you started thinking about security was, at least for me, when I, when I came up that way, was why is my disk getting used so much? What's, wh you know, where, what's all this bandwidth going to? Where are the packets going and chasing them down? And uh, I think this was an entry path for a lot of us. You know, it's uh, the Cliff Stoll's book from, from 15 years ago is, is exactly that. Um, so we all, as an industry, then tend to think about cybersecurity as a sysadmin or a net network problem. <coughs> um, I think antivirus software had a huge in influence on the industry because suddenly security companies were making lots of money selling antivirus. Um, and are still making lots of money actually selling antivirus despite the fact it doesn't work that fabulously. Uh, but they're thinking about products, how to monetize them, how to resell them, how to continue selling things like antivirus. And uh, that you know, may not be the appropriate path going forward. And then a huge influence on the security uh, field is compliance, obviously. So, you know, to me, compliance is. You walk around your house at night, go through a checklist saying, I've shut all the doors, I've shut all the windows, I've locked everything, I've set the burglar alarm, but your house will still get broken into. Here's an axiom about that. I'll let you guys read it. <coughs> Actually, can you read that all the way in the back? I don't know if it's big enough. Okay. I just looked at it and thought, wow, you can't read that. I'll read it to you. Um, compliance isn't security. Put it off as long as you can. If you're doing things right, it won't be hard to check the boxes later. Oh, I forgot to put the word later. Um, but if you're spending time and money on compliance too early in your org's life, you're getting, up, oh, you're getting owned. And not just by the hackers. Probably by the people who you're paying money to do compliance for. Um, 
At Facebook, we didn't actually start a compliance program until a couple years after I was there, and uh, then it was it was kind of because we had to. 